The federal government, through the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, T.B. Silva, has said it plans to build a third refinery in River State, bringing the total to, in the state to three. This is as the River State Governor Yesom Wike insisted that the Niger Delta region is safe for companies to conduct business and demanded that international oil companies, IOCs, relocate their headquarters to the state. The duo spoke when the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Pre Silva, and the management of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, paid a courtesy visit to Wike at the government house in Port Harcourt. Silva also said plans had reached an advanced stage to rehabilitate the existing refineries in the country. This is common as Total Exploration and Production Nigeria Limited expressed concern over what it described as the continuous depletion of Nigeria's oil and gas reserves. The multinational stressed that the situation portends serious danger to the nation's future economic sustainability. And to speak on this, we have a former Commissioner of Environment in Biosa State, Eradiri Udengs, and also uh, Public Affairs Analyst uh, Leonard Ebute, uh, both joining us virtually. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, good morning. I'm going to kick off the conversation with uh, Mr. Udengs. Welcome once again. Um, where are we, and this is to Mr. Odengs now, where are we on the matter of refineries? Is this latest planned addition something that we should celebrate? Well, uh, first of all, let me say that uh, good morning all in the studio there and, of course, Nigerians that are listening. Um, Nigeria have not shown responsibility in terms of managing uh, refineries. However, we must give kudos to President Buhari, and especially the Vice President, uh, Professor Sibanjo, uh, who uh, drove the issue of uh, modular refineries to get, get into a logical conclusion today. You know that our uh, four refineries are down, but uh, uh, about six modular refineries are about coming on stream. Hopefully, if those refineries come on stream, uh, Nigeria will begin to see local production on the increase. But in the area of federal government talking about building new refineries. It is clear that government cannot do business. Government has failed in trying to uh, put its hand in any business that, uh, as we have all experienced. So we will encourage government to do more of a private uh, partnership in, in, in terms of uh, uh, local refining, because the ones we have, you have not been able to put them on stream. Over uh, 450,000 um, barrels per day refining capacity when you put all the four refineries together. But uh, unfortunately, we have not been able to put uh, the turnaround maintenance into logical uh, action. But government is not talking about reinvesting in refineries. No, I, I wouldn't support that. I would rather say that government should do more of a private partnership engagement, just as they have done in the area of uh, the modular refineries that we are now seeing gradually coming on stream. So. Um, the government is doing its best, uh, but uh, clearly we must begin to go the way of uh, private partnership. All right. And uh, Leonard Ebute, uh, I want to get your thoughts also. Um, your two cents on the issue of Nigeria um, and refineries. Yeah, so um, thanks for having me. Um, I couldn't agree more with uh, the first speaker on the topic. Um, it is evident that government's capacity to manage um, resources like this, particularly government-owned enterprise, has been dismal, to say the least. However, countries like Nigeria, a lot of resources is domiciled with the government. And so the question I'll be posing is, would be, what would be the nature of government partnerships? So when the government says we need more refineries, I agree. And maybe we'll come to that in a moment. I agree that we really need to be self-sustaining in terms of power resources in Nigeria. And I think that hydrocarbon energy is not going anywhere for quite some time, despite the global clamor for greener sources of energy. However, the nature of government partner partnership is key. I, I think that the resources for taking on this kind of big project in a place like Nigeria and the rest of Africa is domiciled with government. However, in terms of operational, op operationalizing that kind of agenda, executing that kind of agenda, I believe that 
a strong involvement with the private sector is not only critical to success, it is without it, there can be no sustainable success as our history has proven. All right, and uh, back to uh, Mr. Radi Udengs. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on uh, the concerns by the managing director of Total uh, EP EMP Nigeria, Mike Sangster, about the continuous depletion of Nigeria's oil and gas reserves. Um, where do you think we're going with that? Well, uh, he hasn't said anything new. Um, this is what uh, uh, economists, analysts in Nigeria have always said, that look, uh, um, what we're doing, we're just taking away from the basket, taking away from the basket without putting anything back. Of course, you know that this uh, natural resources has a slow process of, of uh, accumulation. And once you are removing from a, a bucket, obviously uh, it will deplete. And that's what he has saying, said. But I think that his concern is about the Nigeria's mono economy on oil and gas, believing that uh, with the revenue that we get from the oil and gas, we should have been able to expand into other sectors, diversify and ensure that our economy is strong. His concerns and fear is the same thing that have been raised by well-meaning Nigerians to say, look, the way the, the economy is going, the world is all going digital, we cannot rely on just uh, the oil itself because one day this oil will, will, will deplete. And other than even depleting, the world itself is moving away from oil and going into um, uh, new energy sources. So uh, any sane society must begin to invest in alternative economic uh, um, areas like agriculture and others. So uh, what he has said is the same fear that we have raised in the past. Nigerians have talked about it. Anybody who loves this country wants this country to grow. And so what we should be looking at is how do we have the responsible leadership that will begin to diversify our economy so that the oil will only serve as a buffer when things get tough on other areas. So for me, um, uh, these issues have been overflowed. It is, it is time for us to begin to look at how we will move our country to where we expect it to be. And to do that, we must yeah. begin to look at leadership. What kind of leadership do we present? To what kind of leadership do we have at the local level, community level, uh, state level, local government, and of course, the federal? Because we cannot all be blaming federal, federal, federal. Even as states, how many states are actually investing what they are getting into uh, the, uh, um, um, their economy in order to diversify, create jobs, and then make sure that they can sustain where there is no oil. So I think uh, leadership is what our problem is today. And if you look at other countries that have made progress, it is the type of leadership that they have that have guaranteed the progress that uh, we have seen in the UAE and places like that where they have a lot of oil and gas reserves, but that is just a third of the GDP of their country because right. leadership have said, no, let us from here raise the monies that we will create, diversify economy. And of course, they diversified to more of tourism and today the tourism sector is, is creating right, a lot of impact to, uh... in such economies. We as Nigeria must copy from such nations. All right, let's go back quickly to uh, Mr. Leonard Ebute with the time that we have. And he's talking about taking action with regards to diversifying our economy. Uh, can you help explain some of the serious dangers that, that we currently face to the nation's future economic stability? Um, you know, of course, as a follow-up to what um, Mr. Iradi has just uh, spoken about. Yes, on face value, you would you would think that um, what my counterpart just just raised were the issues being raised by the 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 original um, speaker of uh, you know the original opinion opinionist on this topic. But when you look at when you read the statement, it appears to be a little different. It appears to be a little confusing. He he was talking about exploration capacity. At the same time, talking about um, Nigeria's reserve depleting. Like you mentioned, when you take out, you don't put back in, so it's depleting. But let's dimension that a bit. Nigeria, as of 2016, when it was last checked, has 37 billion barrels of confirmed known reserve, right? That, that's nearly 240 years of exploration. If you're looking at our current um, rate of exploration. 
So I, I don't I, I do not think that that is an immediate and present danger. But if you are talking about um, prospecting for additional um, reserves that we have not found, that appears to be where he's going. But it appears to contradict um, a little bit the business thesis. If I have 240 years to make an investment, it still makes sense to make that investment. Okay, that's 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 on the one side. On on the second side, in terms of the economic impact of oil itself, see, Nigeria is already the structure of the Nigerian economy is already significantly diversified. This may not be visible to everybody. Like he, he mentioned, oil is already a third of GDP. What is the problem is the structure of government revenue. It is government revenue that hasn't been sufficiently diversified and that is at risk when these things happen. And the thesis that some of us are proposing is that putting more money in the hands of the government hasn't grown the nation. And so why should I worry that less money will be in the hands of the government if other areas of the GDP that are not government controlled will grow at the expense of oil? And we saw this when oil was zero or even negative. The rest of Nigeria kept moving forward like nothing happened. Okay, while it can be argued that if that had persisted for an extended period of time, it would have had economic impact right? The focus shouldn't be um, a doomsday prediction that the country will go up in flames. There is evidence, there is research evidence that at the resource-rich African kind of development. So this is the antithesis of the so-called, re- what, the, what economists call the so-called resource corps. And so um, I am not at all worried about any doomsday prediction, but I also know that oil is not going anywhere in spite of all of the green revolution, the global climate change and all of that, it is evident that Nigeria will need to invest in oil to meet her own domestic energy needs. And we are not even a net significant contributor to the global um, 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 carbon footprint at all. So it shouldn't be a worry at this point in our economic history I, 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 I am all for um, investing in refineries. The structure of that investment is important. And I think, like he mentioned, local resources at the very local level should get more involved in some of these things. So from an economic prognosis, um, I'm not discounting it, but I'm simply saying it is government that needs to figure out other sources of funding. Otherwise, the economy itself, I believe, will ride any storm from um, from this. All right, and uh, quickly back to Mr. Odengs. Uh, where do you think we should go from here? Um, what, what strategy do you think we should have to avoid uh, the waning that NAPE uh, has already spoken about? Of course, that Nigeria risks long term disruption to oil and gas supplies, power generation, collapse of industries, loss of revenue. There's so much. Um, where do you think you know, our you know, immediate steps should be to avoid some of these things? I think that uh, um, let's give some credit to President Buhari's administration. They have uh, been talking about diversification of the economy, especially the agri sector. Today, you are seeing a lot of Nigerians now focusing on rice production. People are going into agro-based investments for uh, sustainability, which in turn affects the, the, the growth of the country. But I think that uh, to uh, take this to the next level, we must look at the issue of restructuring that have been on the four burner in recent times, where states must begin to look at their comparative advantage and then given the opportunity to uh, explore whatever is within the environment for the growth of the country. If we do that, we will engender competition amongst uh, um, regions in the country. So if some, for instance, uh, Lagos have the best schools and people are going to school, schools in Lagos, you will see places like Bayasa or Katsina also building very good schools so that they can also tap from that. If uh, um, people are leaving banks in Lagos to go and start up farms because there's a lot of money they are making there, you will see a lot of people going into it. I, I think that we must stop this idea of uh, 30 days, everybody go to Abuja to take from the basket. We must reorganize it so that we can begin to tap into 
the natural endowments of our country. We are actually a very rich country. If we want to look at agro sector, we want to look at uh, mineral, solid minerals, we want to look at uh, tourism itself. There are a lot of areas in Nigeria that if we invest in tourism, we can make a lot of money from. So I think that Nigeria, what the, what the federal government should focus on is how to ensure there is security of lives and property because without security nobody wants to bring his money to invest in a chaotic environment and so if government can invest in security and then allow the states you know uh, restructure the country to the point where states begin to take responsibility we can reduce a lot of all this fraud that is going on a situation where you have over bloated um, payroll systems all that is is because there is money coming from somewhere mm -hmm. if the states are the ones who will source for the resources to pay for their workers. You will not see this uh, fraud in payroll uh, uh, schemes that is going on. So I think that going forward, Nigeria must begin to look at restructuring its governance uh, arrangements to the point where states begin to take responsibility of activities in its environment. We are very rich in gold. How do we consolidate most of the minerals that we have seen that that, that 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 is causing part of the crisis in the north in the north today how do we consolidate that and begin to to tap natural uh, um begin to tap foreign exchange from meat for the growth of our country so yeah. um clearly we must begin to move away from a mono economy like the 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 um hydrocarbon sector another issue is is what we're talking about a breakdown in supply and things like that. Somebody came up and said they were suggesting that they want to set, uh, end the amnesty program. If you carry out such actions, if federal government listens to that, then there's going to be disruptions in Niger Delta. So the important thing is how do we deal with the issue of security? Once we can deal with the issue of security and we're not having crisis in Niger Delta, we're not having crisis in the North, gradually Nigerians are very resilient people who can begin to look at these areas and go into investment. If you look critically to our economy, you also see that Nigerians on their own are doing a lot, you know, to, to diversify the economy towards areas that they think that they can, they can earn a, a living. And in that process, of course, they are creating jobs for, for the nation. What our country needs to do is to consolidate on these areas, do what the federal government is supposed to do in areas of policy, um, defense, security, education, and things like that, and allow the states to grow okay. at their own pace, right, obviously wanna, coordinated wanna... by the federal for the general growth and strength of our country. Right. Diversification, um, uh, restructuring, I think, is the way to go. All right, uh, quickly. Uh, let me add the line to that, if I may. Yeah, but, but just before, I just want to throw this one in and uh, so we can wrap this uh, conversation up. Um, uh, this is to Lodan Ebute now. I'm, I'm going to ask if this is a perfect time to bring back the discussion on the cleaning up of the Niger Delta and, of course, the government's promises regarding it. Now we're talking about refineries again, talking about you know, oil companies coming back to reinvest in Nigeria. Is this a great time to talk about the cleanup of the Niger Delta? Yes, and, um, and Buhari's first tenure, I think some significant strides were made in terms of um, trying to clean up the Niger Delta. I mean, the environmental hazards associated with oil exploration is real and global. It is not, um, it is not limited to Nigeria. And wherever there is oil exploration, there will be spillages. What needs to then happen is a set of guidelines, enforceable guidelines, mandating the the, the the responsible parties to ensure that kind of cleaning is done and done in record time and a compensation mechanism that is that is not complicated that is not fraught with um with contention to you know compensate communities that are victims of of of, of those kinds of incidents it will keep happening because this is a going concern now the line i wanted to throw into his argument is this i con i i believe that Every single governor in this country does not require additional enabling legislation of any kind to explore the resources at their disposal, with the exception of oil. The only national resource that we have as of today is oil. States in Benue State, Kogi State, Niger State that are 
competitive in the areas of agriculture do not require any additional enabling laws. These are also states that are notoriously bankrupt. When you look into their history, their, 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 their recurrent expenditure ex, 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 exceeds their IGR. And when you look into their future, you are seeing the same thing. So the stimulus to look for additional sources of IGR is there. The, the, the drive is, I mean, the, the underlying situation that should force governors to think that way already exists. Why are they not doing this? They are simply not doing this because they have chosen not to be accountable for the development of their states. There is no required enabling law required. So I'm saying that the economic component of restructuring that we are talking about is already inbuilt into the structure of our federalism, even as it is. You can say we can strengthen it one way or the other, but we have an existing structure that could have allowed this to flourish. I mean, Donald, you did some job with the Tinapa project trying to open up the economy of, 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 of um, um, a cross river state and all that. Lagos State has moved on a path, you know, to try to improve other areas in IT and all of that. And a few states, like Kedi, made some, some strides in, in, in rice production and wow. all that. So if we require, if we are saying that the structure as it is cannot aid the governor to restructure to, to uh, the economy of their state, that's, I disagree with that. Okay. What, what has made the argument tenuous and difficult is that is the introduction of the political component of restructuring, that there has to be a different structure that, you know, of fiscal federalism in Nigeria to aid some of these things. That political argument will be difficult to achieve, will be stressful, uh, will require constitutional amendment, but the economic component that really affects the lives of the people, any single governor can do it now. Okay. Um, Absolutely do it today. Um, and so what we are seeing uh, is laziness, a, a, a real disregard for their, their constitutional responsibility. And few governors that have decided to take the bull by the own, they have all succeeded. Aradi Reudang, the former commissioner of okay, environment. I, I, and I, I think just to, just to add to what he said, the issue of restructuring that... Uh, uh, some of us are very concerned about it. If you can throw this in in 30, 30 seconds, about. please. In That's all the time we have. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, so because uh, once we restructure, we will now start having the people decide who becomes their governors. In most cases, the parties from Abuja decide at the end of the day, you get buffons, excuse my language, buffons as, uh, as governors until they are just waiting to share money. But aside from that, let's go to the issue of the cleanup. When I was commissioner for environment in Bayelsa, we had this uh, environmental commission that had the Archbishop of York as, as the chairman. And we were in the climate change conference in, in uh, Madrid. Our drive there in UN was to see how an international tax force would be set up on environmental practices by IOC so that the same practice shell will uh, um, uh, inculcate in London should be the same thing when they get to to African nations, because usually they come into Africa to carry out exploration activities, and then they are they are mixed up in the politics of that country, bribery and corruption. So at the end of the day, they come, do the business the way they like, just take the oil and then leave the environment. So we were actually pushing for an environmental commission that and tax force, an environmental tax force that will be set up by UN in order to ensure that the same practice abroad is the same practice that these com com companies must abide when they go to developing nations, irrespective of the politics of that environment. We have seen what is happening in the Ogoni cleanup. If you go there, there is no practical work that you say okay. this will lead to a logical cleanup that we are talking about. It has been uh, involved in a lot of corruption much, and uh, um, misadministration. So, but Nigeria must much. begin to look at how we will have, we have the laws, but how do we have the right persons to ensure that these laws. laws are enforced? Thank you and very that's much. Why we um, we're uh, we're keep completely the blame on the time. political sector. Eradi Rio Deng, the former Commissioner of Environment in Biosa State, thank you so much for speaking with us. And of course, uh, Leonard Ebute, public affairs analyst. Looking forward to having uh, another conversation with you too. Thank you. Thank you.